Deoban, a sleepy little town in the north of India, is modest about its position in the growth of religion, history and scholarship. Yet it was here, over a hundred years ago, that Maulana Muhammad Qasim Nanotvi started a small school which was to grow into one of the world's greatest centers of Islamic learning. It is the year 1866. Under a pomegranate tree in Chitta Masjid, a small mosque in Deoband, Mullah Mahmood gives his first lesson to a solitary boy. We recall that the first intimation of Islam occurred on a lonely mountain when an angel appeared to Muhammad and said unto him, Read, read in the name of thy Lord who did create man. Read for thy Lord is most generous who has taught man the use of the pen, has taught man what he did not know. It is in the spirit of this injunction that this small mosque ultimately became Darul Ulum. These courtyards have echoed to the words of many men of profound wisdom and scholarship. Among them, Maulana Rashid Ahmad Gangohi, Maulana Mahmood Hassan, Maulana Ashraf Ali Thanvi, Maulana Habibur Rahman Usmani, Maulana Hussain Ahmad Madani. These are but a few of the names which are associated with Darul Ulum becoming an international university often referred to as the Al Hazar of the East. Thousands of students from India and abroad come here to study a major epoch in the history of the human mind. Comprehensive and deep study of ancient texts is essential, for they contain eternal truths expressed for the first time in human language. The university today has 33 departments concerned with every aspect of Islam, from the artistry of calligraphy to jurisprudence, from morality to the sociology of a dynamic and living religion which believes in the brotherhood of man. Since attaining university status, over 20,000 scholars have graduated from Darul Ulum. Of these, more than 5,000 have come from far-flung countries in Europe, Africa and Asia. A unique feature of Darul Ulum is that learning and living are entirely free of cost to every scholar. The library offers more than a hundred thousand books and manuscripts relating even to the most remote aspects of Islam, some of them rare and beyond price. Having traveled along the road of Islam for many centuries, we come at last to the Deoband of today, a small town which has become the focus of the Islamic world, for Darul Ulum is celebrating its centenary. Hundreds of thousands of people flock to Deoband, among them visitors and invitees, believers in Islam from many countries of the world. After the Friday namaz, the formal celebrations begin with recitations from the Holy Quran. In his welcome address, the rector of the university, Qari Muhammad Tayyab, reiterates the dedication of Darul Ulum to the highest standards of scholarship.
Among the foreign delegates, the representative of the Syrian Arab Republic says, When we came to Deoband and saw the university, met its people and those working for it, as well as students, we were thrilled to see this great renaissance of Islamic scholarship and attainment of knowledge. كنا في مزيد من السرور والإعجاب بهذه النهضة العلمية الإسلامية ولما حضرنا الاحتفال بمرور المئة سنة على بناء الجامعة وعملها فشكرنا فرأينا جهودا عظيمة جبارة في إعداد هذا الاحتفال the representative of Jordan expresses his great joy at attending the centenary celebrations. The guest from Abu Dhabi says that the very look of this august assembly has made him happy. It is heartening to see such a large number of people gathered for their love of Islam. He prays to God that the Muslims of India may have strength in their faith. في العقيدة الإسلامية وحبا في لقاء الوفود الإسلامية المشاركة في الاحتفال فحي الله إخواننا المسلمين في الهند وحي الله عقيدتهم وزادهم ثباتا على ثبات A scholar from Jerusalem salutes the teachers and the people of India وحي شعب الهند وحي المسلمين علماء وأفرادا عاديين the representative of Iraq expresses his admiration for the scholars and intellectuals of Darul Uloom and is proud of this great Islamic institution. The representative of Kuwait. Indeed, uh, I am very happy and very pleased that I attended this glorious and this great festival which has been called for by Duband Islamic University. This university, which is well known to us in Arabia and well known to other Muslims all over the world as the main Islamic educational center in India. I uh, would like to say that uh, this great gathering of uh, human being reminded me of the gathering of Mecca in Hajj in pilgrimage where, I, where you, see, you see hundreds and hundreds of people uh, attending such a great conference every year uh, in Mecca and in Medina. So this gathering gives us the impression that uh, the Indian Muslims, they give their full respect and their full uh, attitude to this Islamic University of the Uban. Uh, indeed, we pray for the prosperity and uh, long success of this Islamic the University of the Uban. In the meantime, we are uh, my, in the name of myself and in the name of my colleagues from Arabia and other countries, we are thankful to the government of India be, before, because the presence of Mrs. Indira Gandhi gave us the impression that she is giving the, uh, the government respect and uh, care for the Indian Muslims here. Appreciating this significant occasion, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi welcomes everyone from India and abroad. She is happy that so many religious scholars and representatives of different countries are participating in the celebrations. She congratulates the organizers for the excellent arrangements made for such a huge gathering in such a small town. The very presence of so many eminent foreign personages is proof of the important place that Darul Uloom enjoys in the world of Islamic scholarship. This is a matter of pride for all the people of India. The scholars of Darul Uloom fought equally with other nationalists in the struggle for freedom under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi. 
the scholars of this great institution infused a new spirit in our national life. And even more, they have made their mark in the entire Islamic world. Quoting the poet Muhammad Iqbal, who said that religion does not teach intolerance, she is proud of the fact that all religions are treated equally in India. She says most earnestly and with great emphasis that the minorities of India will continue to receive protection to life, property and employment. <laughs> Mrs. Gandhi pays homage to all the great personalities who have contributed to the richness of the many-faceted culture of India. While congratulating this great institution on its centenary, she prays to God that Darul Uloom will continue to serve India and the world in the true Islamic tradition. It is said in the Holy Quran, God is the light of the heavens and the earth. Both the east and the west are of God. And wherever ye turn, there is God's face. Verily, God comprehends and has knowledge of everything.